What's up, YouTube man? Coach B back for some double wing stuff. Um, as you can tell from the intro video, today it's going to be all about the gun wing um, and how I use it in my offensive attack. So before I get to what I'm going to talk about today, man, don't forget if you like my videos uh, all about the double wing, the gun wing stuff, uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you'd like any information on uh, any playbooks and coaching manuals that I uh, that I market, uh, feel free to email me at westcoastload at yahoo.com. Uh, I love all the support. I love all the emails I've been getting, and I just appreciate everyone uh, tuning into my channel. So today I wanted to do an overview on the gun wing and kind of a little bit of history on uh, how I came upon it. So, um, so I was introduced to basically a direct snap shotgun offense that used a wing uh way back in the day in like 2009 2010 and we were using um the yale crunch formation uh coach i was coaching under as an assistant we used a what was called the crunch also known as the, the a yale formation i think it's called the yale crunch where all three backs line up side by side in the backfield and they're in a shotgun package and you just direct snap to the runner and you just take off and it was a, pretty much a physics-based offense. Like if we wanted to run up the middle, we ran up the middle. We had five plays. Um, it was super effective. Like I said, super small playbook, literally five, I think five plays and five runs and two passes. And uh, we moved the ball. And it was literally an eye-opening experience for me. So uh, I happened upon the double wing because I thought I thought what we were doing could be done better. I, I liked the misdirection of the double wing. I also liked the pulling, but I was like, if, if it can be this simple and I could just add uh, a little bit more stuff to it, it'll be perfect. So in 2015, um, I picked up a team and I started messing with the beast formation, which is where you take three backs and you put them on either one side or the other. And I've seen uh, coaches literally design their whole offense around beast. And it's effective. It's hard to stop if you're not prepared for it. Um, but if you... If you don't have superior talent, you can be shut down using Beast unless you have like really good counters. Um, so that being said, I just figured that if I combine the two, uh, in 2015, I was pretty much doing all UC double wing. I wasn't really doing any gun stuff. And I started to mess with Beast and I started looking at, at the Beast formation and kind of just thinking about what it was. And on or around that time, um, Tim Murphy from the Clayton Valley Eagles, shout out coach Tim Murphy, um, he had a high school team in Clayton Valley that's in Concord near me, and they were basically running the shotgun double wing. And I went to a couple games and I saw it in action. And he literally, uh, one of the games I went to, he played a Napa varsity team. And Napa had a really good team. They ran like kind of like a like a wing tee, like a read option kind of offense. I think it was um, the same offense that uh, De La Salle runs. Um, and. Uh, the Clayton Valley just absolutely destroyed Napa. Like came in there only in a running formation. They were in the they were in the gun, like you know, the gun wing, but they have a few different formations that they use. Uh, Tim Murphy has it a little bit more advanced than what I do. Um but they just absolutely mopped mopped Napa and I couldn't believe it. So I started looking at combining the both offenses and and essentially that's what I did. Uh that's what I did. So in 2016, uh, with my team who had had one year already in the system and they were going to have their second year in the system, I introduced the gun and on the line, nothing really changed. Like that was why I liked it so much and why I felt that I could take my Kalande principles and the good God blocking system and just bring it over to what Tim Murphy was doing in the gun and, um, basically merge those two together. And that's what I did. So um, today I'm just going to talk about a little overview of the gun wing, um, the primary formations I use, and also two pri alternate formations that I use that kind of come out of the gun wing. And I'll explain those. Um, then I'm just going to go over some pros and cons of the gun. Um, there are a few cons. There are many pros. Uh, and I will get into that. And uh, then I'm just going to close out with how does it affect good God and also um, using the gun with tags, specifically the tags I use in my system that are for UC primarily, I can bring those or I have brought them over to gun. And if you wanted to use gun as your only offensive system, in fact, if you notice from the highlight video, I was only using gun. And I'll kind of explain to that when I get into the, um, the some of the pros of the gun wing formation. Uh, I'll kind of talk to you why I did that for that specific team. But in 2016, I was using both a combination of a UC double wing offense and a gun wing offense. Um, I was using both at the same time and it works better. 
uh, as a combination. I feel if you can do both, if you can line up under center and run, and then line up in the gun and run, uh, the, the, the more looks that your offense has, the more things the defense has to prepare for. So with no further ado, we'll go to the whiteboard. I'll kind of chalk out uh, you know the topics and kind of go over the stuff I want to talk about today in gun, and we'll just get right into it. All right. All right, so let's just get right into it. So as you can tell uh, on the board already, I have basically a, a standard UC double wing formation. So this would be your U, your UC DW double tight. Okay, now I always offset my fullback. Like ninety nine percent of the time, I'm always offsetting my fullback right now. So you can tell my fullback is in the bear formation. So pretty much, since this is an overview of the gun wing, uh, essentially backed up from what I do is all the only alignment differences I make for my standard UC double wing to go into the gu gun wing is I bring my quarterback back to three point five yards. And then I bring my left wing, who's my three back. I bring him at four yards directly behind the tight end. And now your alignment is gun wing. So there's very few changes to the backfield. And there's only two people that really move. So this is one of the formations that I use. Like I said, I have two primary formations. One is gun and the other one is gun left. The only differences with gun left is that your wing and your fullback will switch to the left-hand side. And then your tailback, your three-back, will actually flip-flop to the other side. And he's at four, okay? So that's gun left. So again, two primary formations, gun, gun left, okay? Now gun left allows you to kind of, if this is your fastest kid, this being your two-back and this being your three-back, it allows you to Trojan sweep this way using like a 26 Trojan sweep. Um, if I went into gun, I could also do a 36 Trojan sweep. My three back would come over here. My two back would flip flop. You can Trojan either way and you can Trojan sweep with either one of your personnel, whether that be your three back or your two back, however you want to do it. Now, when I started using this system, I, uh, I started playing with some alternate formations that I also saw Tim Murphy run. And the reason I, I started using these formations is because I thought about what if I lost my quarterback? So let me just go back into standard gun. So I started thinking about what if I lost my quarterback? Would I have the ability to go into a shotgun direct snap offense, okay? So that's critically important because for most teams that are, you know, super dependent on their quarterback, um, it's a big deal. Your quarterback goes down. You want to still be able to run your offense. So some alternate formations I started playing with was specifically Eagle heavy and Eagle heavy left. Now, the only thing I do in Eagle heavy is I will take my fullback. Okay. This is my fullback. I will take my three back and I will bring my three back over here to where the four back usually is. Then I will bring my quarterback and I will stack him behind the three back. Okay. And then this would be my four back right here, okay? He's in the shotgun at about 3.5, okay? And that's eagle heavy, okay? And then I have eagle heavy left, which is the same exact thing, only everybody flip-flops to this side. So you'd have a stack over here and your wing would be over here, okay? And you saw that in the video a couple times. I go eagle heavy or eagle heavy left. Now, pretty much the stuff I run from this is um, I run goal line, short yardage stuff. Uh, anytime I have injuries, I can put pretty much any personnel I, I want out here. In fact, I call it eagle heavy because sometimes I will take I will take my quarterback out and my three back and I'll put just two bigger kids here, just linemen, okay? And you're running the same exact kind of stuff. We're just running, you know, off tackle power. So you're going to have, you know, most likely a double here, a double here. This, now my three back is responsible for the kick out. It's all good God blocking. Three back is responsible for the kick out. Uh, the quarterback is just responsible for an, uh, an open up bucket step and just a straight lead. And then the quarterback just basically gets the shotgun snap and he just basically follows right in this little line right here. Okay. <clears throat> so that's eagle heavy, right? And eagle heavy left. Like I said, it would be the exact opposite of that. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to clear the board. I'm just going to talk about some options of the gun and some options, like some reasons why I actually use this instead of UC double wing. All right. So let's talk about some pros and cons of the gun. Um, so first of all, with pros, you know, honestly, 
to really be honest with you, man, I didn't see a whole lot of cons about going to the gun as long as you are um, using it as a combination with UC. But what I'm going to just going to tell you is, number one, there's a lot less coaching of footwork with this offense. Anytime you move this kid in the under under center uh, configuration, you move your wing over here. Okay, this quarterback is exiting a lot of is executing a lot of complex footwork. There's a lot of movement around here. He's going to clear kids, especially on counters. Even when he power tosses, he spins in the hole, tosses the ball out here, and then basically spins and comes right through the hole to block. Well, that all has to be taught, okay? So all that footwork absorbs practice time. Now, if you go to a shotgun wing configuration, automatically you're taking away a lot of the footwork that you're going to have to teach this kid. Okay, now if he can do both, great. But one of the great things about this offense is that this kid has a lot less to learn. So your depth as a coach is usually a lot better because this kid can be taught to hand off to this kid regardless of who this kid really is. He doesn't have to carry out a lot of complex footwork for this offense to still go in case you have an injury, which is kind of my next point. You have a less dependence on QB1. So if this kid goes down, you can swap any kid, you know, that, that can run the ball and immediately go into, you know, um, the ability to convert into a direct snap package is super easy with the gun. If you already have shotgun snaps down, um, you can shotgun snap to anybody and your running game is, is not going to be slowed down. Now, one thing I want to talk about the gun is that not having this kid here, the one main pro I see with the gun wing formation is specifically pulling speed, okay? The ability to get these kids out on power and just get them up the field, okay? And just just pulling as fast as they can, okay? I am a gate puller, so this is how I block on the backside. But what happens is when that ball comes out, these kids do not have this kid in the way, okay, to crash into, so your, the speed of your pulling is enhanced, which means the speed of your play is enhanced. So all you guys are having any problems with like backside pursuit or any of that stuff, this play hits really, really fast, okay? Um, number, this is probably, I guess, the number two best things about the gun wing is that on your 34 power, okay, when double wing UC teams are typically spinning in the hole and tossing to this kid, who is kind of starting from here and going in motion and catching the toss. When that toss comes out, the three backs eyes are on the toss till he gets the ball. And once he gets the ball and kind of gets his, you know, his bearings, then he finally looks up at the line. Okay. And then he has to assess what the blocking looks like. Now, the number, like the hardest thing to teach a kid is just natural running instincts, especially at the, some of the younger, younger ages. So the more time you give this kid right here to keep his eyes on how the blocking lane is, is forming is going to be better off for this kid. So I noticed when I, when I started putting my kid in the gun, my running backs were telling me they were just, they were getting a lot more yards because they were eyes up the whole time. You can get a handoff while you're still looking at the blocking that's kind of like, like forming in front of you. Okay. So gun 34 power goes even harder than Ray 34 power from, from the U, from a UC formation. It is great. It just allows for quarterback, I'm sorry, allows for running back vision. Um, the gun wing is also great for a running quarterback. You saw a couple times in the, uh, in the video, I have a, a play 14, uh, rocket 14, I'm sorry, Ray 14 power lead where this kid just comes across motions like this. Then once he gets here, Direct snap to quarterback. This kid comes straight down the pipe. My fullback goes to kick. Okay, and then he just gets the shotgun snap and follows right behind him on a on a on a fourteen lead play. Okay, just a simple just a simple power lead play. Uh, the gun wing is great for a running quarterback. Again, you don't have as much dependence on that QB one, uh, which can lead you into problems if you know you have an injury, you have some kid go down. You know, there's all kinds of things that can happen. Um, so, uh, another great thing about the gun is that this, 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 this alignment just backs defense up 
by alignment only, okay? It's a great combo to use with UC Double Wing. A lot of defenses will start crowding you and just bringing everyone in. You would be astonished with just doing this little simple move by moving a kid into the gun and putting this, you know, running back in a normal standard passing configuration, not a passing configuration, but a normal standard backfield alignment. It will back the defense up so you can continue to run, okay? Um... The last but not least with this, it allows you to use the Trojan Sweep, okay? With the Trojan Sweep, um, the Trojan Sweep, you're, you're using, you're pulling both guards and the backside tight end, okay? So um, what, what this formation allows you to do is this snap comes out fast enough, okay? I'm going to show you 27 Trojan here. This snap comes out fast enough, allowing both of your guards to just basically, I mean, pull deep into the backfield and get around this corner, okay? There's no, there's nobody in the way. They can come full speed, full back. As soon as the ball is snapped, full back can come, and he's coming around the corner to the block, okay? It allows you to use Trojan Sweep. There are no under center double wing sweeps that are as good as the Trojan Sweep from gun, you heard it here first. Okay, so now the only other things I wanna talk about with gun is how does it affect good God? And then how do you use tags to multiply the effect of this offense? Okay, so now you have your basic uh, gun configuration on the board now. So what I wanted to talk about is how does this affect good God? There are no differences between good God, um, between UC and gun, because as you can tell, besides being in bear alignment for your fullback, there's no differences to the line. The wing is still over there. Um, the 27 and 36 Trojan, uh, blocking, you know, schemes have different rules. Um, but pretty much everything from tackle to tackle still follows, um, you know, standard good God stuff. It's not anything different. Um, I don't know what happened to my light. Uh, we'll just play through. It doesn't matter. My light's blown out. Um, so it doesn't affect good God. It's everything works with good God. So. The last thing I wanted to go over is how we use tags to multiply this attack. So I've done this in years past. I haven't used it honestly as much as I want, but I use basic tags. Um, I use an angry and ugly tag, okay, to unbalance my line, okay, which is moving a tackle from one side to the other. Uh, I use a fire and flame tag, okay to put my wing on the line of scrimmage. Fire would be the right wing and flame would be the left wing, okay? And then I use a bull and bear to offset my fullback. So in gun, the standard is always bear. Gun left would be the standard would always be bull. That will never change, okay? But what I wanna talk about is using angry and ugly and fire and flame to modify your gun formation. So any play would be, uh, they always start with tags, so it would be angry, whoops, angry, fire, gun, 34, power, okay? So I'm gonna explain to you how that, how that um, changes the base formation. So essentially what angry is going to tell you is angry is going to tell you that you're going to take, take a tackle. Okay. Your tackle on the left side is going to line up, line up on the right side. Okay. So now you basically have a guard and a tight end. Okay. This is going to be your original guard. This is going to be the tackle that comes over. This is going to be your original tackle. And then this is going to be your original tight end. Okay. And the wing would of course bump out, okay? But you notice, now remember, he has to move over, okay? Always be in alignment behind the tight end, okay? Now you notice that I also called fire, so that's going to tell the wing that he is also going to be on the line of scrimmage. So look how crazy this looks, okay? And then essentially you're still going to run 34 power, okay? Now. If they don't figure out how to align or they don't like know like really what to do, uh they're they <laughs> they could be they could be screwed, okay? Like some sometimes they they try to do this. 
And they they just bounce around like oh uh oh and they you know like start bringing kids over here i mean you might get a weird look like that if they don't realize it but the biggest thing is i want to discuss how it affects good god specifically so this is your original two man this is your original four man and this is your this is your six man also known as the kingpin and this is your wing so good god rules are unaffected the tackle that comes over he goes inside the original tackle okay so this is your at man. So your your target for your running back is going to be off his hip. Okay? He's still the at man. So he is blocking good. Gap on, outside gap, down. So by rule, he would just fire down on this kid. Okay? This guy, everyone inside is blocking gap on, down. Because all men inside the at man block God. Okay? So he's blocking God. He's blocking God. So gap on, no, is there anyone who's gap? No, on, yes. So it's a double team right here, okay? This guy's also blocking God, gap on, down. He's got no gap, no on, so it's an automatic down block. Center's blocking man on, man away, okay? Center, I mean, sorry, backside guard is pulling to second level. Tight end is going to fast side, fast inside reach, okay? Now, out here, this is your kingpin. His rule is gap down backer. He sees no gap, no down, so he goes straight to backer. This guy is your is your wing. He uh, he follows the kingpin. He blocks first backer inside, so he probably take it right up here. Okay. If if this if this defensive end bumps out this far, I will actually send my fullback out there just just make sure he kicks him out. Okay, and then essentially what you have right here is you have your your, your three back comes down, gets the handoff right here, okay? And he's just going to follow into this scrum. I mean, there, there should be a ton of running room, okay? Now, don't forget, after the handoff, your quarterback has to fake boot the opposite direction to pin this defensive end, okay? Especially if you're going short-sided on this side. But again, angry, fire, gun 34 power, okay? It's a way to unbalance your formation. You could do this without going fire, like if you just called angry gun. Um, angry gun would be really no difference other than this. Your wing would just not be on the, not be on the line of scrimmage, okay? And he would still do first backer inside. His rule, his blocking rule does not change. Just the simple tag just gives you a different look to this offense. You could also do this in gun left. You could go um, ugly gun left, 35 power, and this would flip-flop. You could do ugly flame gun left, 35 power, and this would look the same, okay? And this works for all your plays. Anytime you send a tackle over, always remember that the new tackle goes inside the original tackle and he blocks God, okay? So everyone inside blocks God. God, God. This guy's the original guy. He blocks good. Everybody else just follows their blocking rules. So I hope that's a, you know, that's a good lesson on how I employ the uh, gun wing. Hope you guys learned something today. And again, if you guys want to employ the gun wing, it's great for cutting down on practice time. It's great so that if you have a quarterback go down, um, your offense doesn't come to a screeching halt. It has a lot of good uses. Um, again, just back the defense up and keep on running. All right, everybody, wing on.